Hello, this is Isaac, and this is a new version of this video. I just didn't like the way I did it. It wasn't that professional, and I got also two dislikes here, which is not good. So I'm going to make up redemption. This is a redemption video. So why you should use Elixir? Well, one of the big reasons is Erlang. So Elixir is a functional programming language. It was created by Joseph Olin. And it runs on the Erlang virtual machine, which means it embraces the power and the features of Erlang. Well, one of them is distributed. That means that it can run on multiple nodes, hence it can scale horizontally. It can also scale vertically. Uh, that means that you just add more CPU, more memory, more power to your server. So you get covered from both ways. And it's fault tolerant, which is the major point here. And uh, first of all, uh, you can see Erlang, that Erlang was created by Ericsson, which is a telecommunication company. So I don't know how about, uh, how about you, but I trust a telecommunication company when it creates a language because it's basically, it's, it runs phones and phones must live forever. When was the last time that your phone didn't work because of maintenance or upgrade? It didn't happen to me. I mean, it's not something that happens often at least, because they need to keep their servers working all the time, nonstop. So the creators of Erlang, uh, which are right here, they made it fault tolerant. Now to make a, a language fault tolerant, it must be concurrent, because you must isolate operations, you must isolate requests. Because remember, if your application is single-threaded, that means it's blocking. And if something goes wrong, it will stay blocked, and it will shut down your whole system. But if it's run concurrently or in parallel, it doesn't matter, then you can isolate it. You can isolate every operation. And if something goes wrong, then only that specific request operation will crash, but not, not the entire app. Your app will still working and no one will notice that. And this is one of the great features of Erlang. This is what makes it great, what makes Elixir great. And let me show you an example of what I mean by that. This is just a Phoenix app that I have. I'm going to run it in the console. And I'm going to, this is a cool feature that comes with the Beam, which is the Erlang virtual machine. I can see the stats of my application. So I have here, as you can see, a 150 processes. I know this is for running on a four CPU machine. Now in Elixir and Erlang, these processes is basically what makes things great. And you see now it's a bump up to 151, I think because of this window. So every request in Elixir is a lightweight process. So you send, imagine you, you send 100 requests to a specific API. So each request is going to be an isolated lightweight process that might run in parallel or in concurrent. It doesn't matter really for, that, for this specific uh, point. But it's not going to block each other. And if one process goes bad, then that's OK. The rest of the processes will continue working. Now, let me show you an example here. This is also the tree of the app. It's called Chart Secure. It also has other aspects of the app, but let's focus on this one. So you see here, all of these are processes, all of them. Some of them are named, like you can see this one, but some of them are not. But all of them has a number. This is a process ID identifier. It's called PID. All of them has a PID. If you open it, you can see the memory is only two kilobytes. This is what I mean, lightweight. It's amazing. You can create millions of them. This is how you achieve scalability and fault tolerance. And you have your messages, if, if, but it doesn't have any messages at the moment. But this is how you can communicate between processes if you want to, because some processes may, might be linked, like you see here. So this is a supervisor, and it supervises this whole tree. So remember these numbers, 271, 272, 270. Let me shut down this whole pool the repo pool, let's kill it. So Phoenix is the framework and you see here this, this is like, it was killed. We are murderers, that's who we are. So Phoenix was created by Chris McCord and this is just how he built Phoenix. And as you can see, all the numbers have changed. So what happened here is that the supervisor that supervises this whole operation he got noticed that some processes uh, crashed, got killed, got terminated, it doesn't matter, and we need to restart them so our app will continue to work as normal. Now, 
by restart, it doesn't mean it's going to restart exactly the same process. No, it's just going to replace it with another process. As, as you can see here, because it's different numbers, it's not the same number. But everything is working. You see, I can kill it again. And it's going to change. You see here, 388, 389. Let's kill it. You see here on the terminal, numbers have changed again. This is great. It's amazing. So this is how you achieve fault tolerance. This is how you can take care of specific processes. And again, you might not want everything to be isolated. You might want processes to be linked, just like in here. And if one goes down, you want to make the others go down too. So it's, you're, it's very flexible on the way you can design it. And, and this is using OTP, which is an open telecom platform. This is basically the way that you can write concurrent code in Erlang and Elixir. Now, I, I just want to make this clear. This is not difficult, okay? Don't be scared of Erlang. Uh, people are saying it's difficult to learn. No, it's not difficult. It's actually pretty easy to understand the concept. You just need to read some books. Uh, Elixir in Action is a great book for OTP. And um, also Programming Phoenix. These are just the ones that I read. I cannot comment about others. But I really like them. And as you can see here, uh, Phoenix, as I mentioned, if we look at the news, and we have here, the road to 2 million WebSocket connections of Chris McCurry alone on one single server in Rackspace. It was a powerful server, but only one. He got to 2 million connections at the same time. This is quite, quite amazing. So my point here of showing this to you, and I'm going to show you also this one. Uh, this is a nurse project of Elixir that allows you to write Elixir, allows you to write embedded systems with Elixir, with the Raspberry Pi. And this is an app that I created, a chat room using React uh, as the front end. And you can create a room and you can see here that I'm connected. And if I'm going to open another tab, the same room, I'm connected twice. And if I can send here hello to, to myself and I can see it here. And I also can see that I'm connected here twice and I can shut this down and it's going to immediately go down. If, if someone else will join this app, I'm going to see that too. This is the Phoenix Presence feature. Uh, you, you can go read about it. I'm going to put a link to a video that talks about it. But my point here of showing you that is Elixir. And Elixir is a great language that gives you power, that gives you scalability. And Phoenix gives you productivity. You can bind them together and you can bind them with React, for example, or whatever front end stack you use. You have a lot of power for one programmer. Try to do it with languages that are not fit for that, and this is a problem. And this is a problem that I want to talk about because, well, first of all, I wanted to tell you that you don't need to use Elixir for everything. For example, if I need to build now an admin system that doesn't need to scale and it's heavy on forms, I probably will go with Ruby on Rails maybe, or maybe Laravel, the PHP framework, just because, well, they have much more libraries. And if I don't need to scale, I don't need to use this. You know, it's, it's pretty much, you know, pick the right tool for the right job. It doesn't mean that Phoenix can't do it. But at the moment, me speaking, well, I, I can just be more productive with other stacks for that specific purpose. But if you need scalability, if you need concurrency, and if you need uh, this kind of apps, you know, this chat, and the Elixir Phoenix is amazing for that. And I built this, it was very easy for me to build this one. The Elixir part was very easy. The React part was the one that I battled with. Battled with. It's great for building APIs. And the only thing that Elixir and Erlang doesn't shine in is heavy computations, but you have solutions. So you don't need to switch the whole stack. You can just use a module called NIF, which allows you to write C code in your Erlang. So if you need some heavy computation, just bring in C code. It's quite easy. Now, I started my web development journey with uh, PHP. And you know, when I learned PHP, all the tutorials that I've watched, I haven't covered 100% of them, of course, but they, they don't talk to you about concurrency. They don't talk to you about all these you know, fault tolerant and scalability. They don't mention that. And there, of course, there's a reason why they don't mention it. But what I'm trying to say is that, that once you get into Elixir, you're going to be mind blown by 
how much power now you can have and how different now you will think about your system. You're going to start thinking about now concurrency and about setting a supervisor that will restart this process and how to shield your app. And I think, I think this is the way that we should all choose. This is the way that we should pick for future applications. Because why, why write an app that needs to scale with a language that doesn't scale easily? And if you think that you're going to throw money on the problem, then maybe you don't have enough money. Maybe you don't have enough budget. Because, you know, if you want to scale a language, let's take, take example PHP, Ruby, or Erlang. If you try to scale PHP and Ruby, you can scale it, of course. I'm not saying all, all these languages can scale, of course. But you have to put more money and more development time. That means, that, that, that means trouble. Because what if you don't have that kind of money? What if you go out of business before you get the funding that you wish for? So this is bad. So don't rush, okay? Even if now you know PHP, you know Ruby, and you think it's going to be easier for you to start, always see the future. So if you need a, uh, an app that needs to scale, that needs real time, definitely pick Elixir Phoenix. Or you can pick other languages if you would like. You can pick Golang if you want to, or Rust. But Phoenix just makes you extremely productive. It makes you Rails productive like, which is why I like it. If you don't need to scale, then you can use whatever you want. It could be Ruby, it could be PHP, and that's, that's, specific, that's uh, perfectly fine. So I showed you the benefits of Elixir or Erlang when you should all when you should when you should must use a tool like that that supports concurrency and when you don't have to use it but i truly believe that you this is a language that you should learn it that's at least from my opinion okay so let me know what you think about this video and i really hope that uh, you won't be afraid to use it okay so have a great day